92Q, the best mix of R&B, the Kenny Smooth Morning Show, where we're always live, live and local. local. Right here, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we're always connecting uh, you to what's happening here in our city, and sometimes it's, it's not always the best stuff. Yeah. You know, um, over the past uh, tenure of our show, we've only been on the air since October the 11th, and we've had some terrible tragedies with relationships and domestic violence. Uh, things ending tragically. Uh, October the 24th, uh, a man slit his girlfriend's throat in Nashville. On the 20th of November, a wife was stabbed to death by her husband in Brentwood. On the 29th of November, a man shoots his ex-girlfriend's boyfriend and then himself. Uh, and then on December the 2nd, a husband shoots his wife and himself in Smyrna. Terrible things. Mm. And then another one just came out today in Hendersonville where a man strangled his wife to death with a extension cord. So Jeez. it's out of control. Absolutely, there's something happening right now, definitely in this particular time period. Mm -hmm. And uh, we wanted to talk to somebody that has survived the possibility of all of this happening. Yeah. Uh, introducing into the show this morning, welcome Sparkle Johnson. How are you doing? Welcome. Hello. Welcome hey, to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Now, you were tortured for days. Yes. Was that the final straw? Absolutely. Or was, okay, give us the backstory. Okay, so we have three children together, mm -hmm. and we were together six years, and he actually became abusive within that first year. I was nine months pregnant with my now six-year-old daughter, Miracle. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to ask this. And Miracle is here. Yes, Miracle is here. <laughs> hey, Miracle. Let me ask you this. You said he started in the first year, and you've been, you were together for six years. What made yes. you stay? That is the most famous question. So when it comes to domestic violence, mm -hmm. I grew up in North Nashville. And, of course, I was exposed to a whole lot of things, but not domestic violence. I never saw a man hit a woman. Mm -hmm. I heard stories, but never witnessed it. Um, so when the first time he hit me, it's phases to it. My first initial response was shock. Mm -hmm. Why did I get hit? What did I do? And then what's wrong with him? Mm -hmm. And once I heard his sob story, I began to feel sorry for him. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to make it right. I wanted to prove to him that no matter no. what, I was going to be there for him and that he was just trying to push me away, but that I was going to stay no matter what. And then being pregnant and your hormones were going everywhere. That, sure, that had a lot to do place. with it, too. And then, so, then I turned on everybody. Isolation is one of the first indicators of domestic violence. Mm. And so, while he was isolating me, I was pushing him away, too, you know. Um, he had made comments about his family, and I was like, they don't, they don't love him. They don't, it's just me and you against the world. So, then, once it continued on, I got scared. I became fearful. So then I was like, how do I get out of this? And so I went through all these phases in the course of the six years until it was almost too late. And it was time out for phasing and figuring out. I had to take action and take action right now. Now, you said that you were in the bathroom floor when you basically had the epiphany that this is it. Was it then when you were on the bathroom floor or no, was it the I had three days of... It was torture. The, yeah, it was three days of torture. It was a face. I wasn't on the bathroom floor. I was on the in my bedroom, and he was stumping my head. Ooh. With and his I, feet? Yeah, with his feet. Oh, my goodness. And he's not a small guy. He's 6'2", mm -hmm. um, maybe 260, 270. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I just, and I remember. 260, 270. Mm -hmm. And if y'all see Sparkle, she is a little woman. <laughs> little bitty She's thing. She's a little woman. Oh, and my gosh. so I remember it stopped hurting me physically. It wasn't hurting anymore and I thought I was dying. I remember I had a flashback of when I shaved off my eyebrow in the third grade yeah. and I just was like okay God I'm about to die. Yeah. Just don't mm. let me um, don't let my kids find me dead because they were in the next room during these entire three days. Mm. Don't let my children find me dead and if you get me out of this this time this is the last time I will go, I will prosecute, and I will not look back. And you did that. And that's exactly what I did. Praise where God. He, where is he now? He's serving a 20-year sentence. 20 <gasps> years? Yes. For, for what he did to you? Yes. yes. 20 wow. years. Whoa. The judge did not play with him. 
No, um, actually, he recorded. He videotaped everything that he done. Okay. And so yeah. they had the video recording. Um, so he li- he liked doing this type of stuff. He or he 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 got his rocks off some type of way by doing it. Something. Something was yeah, going something on. Something is definitely mentally wrong because a lot of people think domestic violence abusers are either on drugs or drunk. He didn't do either one. He didn't wow. do drugs. So, so tell us about your organization yeah. and the the the, uh, the the phoenix Hello. that's come out of these ashes. Well, so now you know I'm still a mother of five, right? And I work a regular job, and I founded my own nonprofit, Super Women Inc. Super and it's Women called Inc. Super Women Inc. But we actually help men and women victims of okay. domestic violence. Awesome. So, and what we do is just offer any kind of support that they may need. Um, we help them find housing or shelter, um, go to court, court support. Uh, mm-hmm. Because if they don't have nobody to go, they probably won't go. Right, right. right. And so, um, and if they need some financial assistance, as long as they're doing their part, because we know how touchy that can be, we'll mm-hmm. assist with that and get them the resources that they need. Okay. Now, what? give us some words for women that are in the situation that you were in. What like, can you tell them? And I mean, I'm, I mean, like, somebody's in their car right now. Yeah. And if you could get to them right now, they're just going through what you just went through. What would you say right now to that person in the car? Don't think about it. Just do it right now because the next time could be your last time. It's time out for thinking about it. You don't have to plot. You don't have to plan. Um, Inbox me. Email me if you know my number. Call me. I work at the Kingdom Cafe on Jefferson Street. There you go. I'll be there. Come by and see you. Um, I have detectives that actually work that I work with as well. So, and he's actually the owner of operations at my job. So, if I need to leave to go and help you, that's that's what I'm there for. I'm there for the ministry portion of it all. Mm. So, it's I'm, I'm not hard to find at all. Fine. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean that's why we do this show. That's why we do what we do. We're trying to connect you to the dots. Somebody needs this, and you needed to hear that. You don't have to suffer through this. No. You can just go down to the Kingdom Cafe. Don't even call. Just go down just there. Go down there. And they, got, and they got the pieces already snapped together. You just got to do your part. Get down there. Don't live through this. And please do not end up on the wrong side of a story on my show. Mm. We, we just we, we hate hearing these stories. And thank you for shedding some light uh, on what you're doing and how you're helping and, uh, and your story of survival. It's amazing. Thank you. I also, um, if it's okay, I want to thank my support system. Please. My sorority, the Doves, with our founder, Lakita Steve, First Lady Lakita Stevenson, Daughters of Virtuous Excellence and Spirituality. I want to thank my community, the entire Nashville, how they have rallied around Jones Padilla Magnet School, my church, New Covenant Baptist Church, where our pastor is Christopher Williams. Mm -hmm. My family, I could not have got to this point without them. Um, You know, family will turn their back on you Mm -hmm. if you go back too many times. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say for the support systems out there that know somebody, don't get frustrated if they keep going back. They need to see somebody solid. Because what happens is when you turn your back and say, I'm done, that's drama she loves it she's gonna go back we the victims looking at it you're right so Mm. i'm all he's all i got he's the only one that's gonna be stable and they go right back so you pushing them back into the arms of their abuser so just stick in there with them and i thank everybody who is stuck in there with me thank you so much super women inc 615 at gmail.com if you want to get in touch with sparkle super women incorporated thank you sparkle johnson for being on the show i appreciate it thank Thank you so much you're welcome